All right, folks, we'll be getting started momentarily. If you haven't done so, state your name and where you're calling from. I'd love to say hello to you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, folks, welcome to the call. If you're just getting uh, getting on, please state your name and where you're calling from. We'd love to say hello to you and welcome you to the, uh, the training session tonight. Go ahead and state your name and where you're calling from. Oh, I think I'm, I may have, have us muted. Wonder from Dallas. Hey, from Dallas. Who was that from Dallas? Wanda. Hey, Miss Wanda, how are you? I'm great. How about you? I am excellent. Excellent. Good to have you on. Good to have you on. How was the weather in Dallas today? Hot. It was hot. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, that's right. It was. Uh, it's a bit rainy today here in Houston. So uh, we've had uh, we've had rain all day long. So it's uh it's been an interesting work from home day today. <laughs> All right, folks, if you're just joining us, go ahead and state your name, where you're calling from. Love to say hello to you. Hunter from Houston. Hey, Hunter, how you doing, man? Good. Good to have you on. Great to have you on. All right, folks, let's go ahead and get started here. I know we've got uh, several people that will, um, will be joining us momentarily. Let me make sure that we are recorded and uh, we are ready to roll. But uh, certainly want to uh, welcome everybody to the call tonight. Uh, obviously, uh, this has been an incredible, incredible month so far. Many of you are experiencing tremendous growth uh, in your business and just throughout your teams, throughout your organization. And it's really as a result of a lot of the things that are taking place inside of the company, but more importantly, a lot of things that are taking place inside, uh, inside of you. Uh, many of you, if you remember a few weeks ago, we had a conversation about uh, building you incorporated. And I, I strongly believe that it is not until you as the business owner, you as the entrepreneur, begin to develop and work on your mindset, you begin to develop and work on your skill set, that uh, the results begin to show up uh, in a monumental way. I had a chance uh, the other day listening to a, an interview session as, as, uh, as I find myself doing all of the time, one of the things that you will find uh, as you're as you're going through this process of growth and going through this process of learning is you know learning is is something that happens outside of the classroom. You can learn, uh, you can just learn from uh, whether it be an audio. You can learn from a book. You can learn from individuals. But I find myself watching interviews of successful people, whether they're successful in business, they're successful in their industry, they're successful. Uh, in their marriage, they're successful as a father or as a mother. Uh, I tend to, to watch interviews like that because I, I glean and gain a lot of uh, understanding and wisdom from many of these things. And the other day, I had an opportunity uh, to watch an interview with uh, Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. Uh, he and his wife did an interview, and uh, it was the Father's Day special that uh, they did. And he was talking about raising, they were talking about raising their sons and uh, how he learned how to be a father and the fear that came with it, the excitement that came with it, the joy that came with it. And he was talking about how he gleaned uh, his parenting style from his father because his dad uh, was, uh, was in the military. Winter says she watched it as well. It was, it was very, very poignant in terms of some of the things that he said. But, but he talked about because his father was a disciplinarian and his father uh, was in the military, that one of the things that he learned from his father was through an event uh, that took place. His dad had gone out and purchased some, uh, some property. And this property was dilapidated and the roof had caved in. And uh, his father took he and his brother and his sister and said, hey, we are going to build or, or rebuild this, this entire building. 
And of course, they were teenagers. So any of us that remember our teenage years or have teenage children or teenage kids, uh, you know, teenagers don't want to do anything but what they want to do. And so um, nonetheless, they go over and uh, they, they're there uh, to do that work. And they started to make the assumption that their dad would hire somebody else to do it because maybe it seemed insurmountable that they could not do what it is that he was saying to do. And he said, how do you build this building? He says, we don't have to worry about building the building. We have to worry about laying one perfect brick at a time. And he said it took them all the way through the summer when they started, all the way to the day before Christmas when they put on the last brick. And he said, Will Smith said, as he was recanting this experience, that it was one of the most emotional experiences that he and his siblings had been through because it taught them something that he said is the biggest lesson in his life for how he's taken that same principle and applied it to his, his career, his business, and even into his fatherhood. And, and this is why I always talk about success principles are easy to find. They're just hard to follow. Would you please start your notes with that? Success principles are easy to find. They're hard to follow. It's, it's, it's in the circumference of that understanding for me that I want to really talk to you guys tonight about something that is so relevatory to your success in your business. Will Smith says something that really jumped out to me and I started to really draw parallel to his explanation of learning how to embrace, and I want you to hear this word, suffering. Learning how to embrace suffering. I, I, I venture to say this, and I want you to listen to me clearly, hear my heart. There can be no success without suffering. There can be no success in your business without some form of suffering. L ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I wish I could tell you that getting to your goal in our business would be easy. I, I wish I could tell you that everybody you emailed, everybody you called, every post you put up would be greeted with open arms. I, I wish I could tell you that Every single time somebody told you they would join your business, they would actually get started. I wish I could tell you every time you invited a guest to get in on a Zoom, they would log on. I wish I could tell you that every single time you gave somebody a sample or sent them a sample, they would get the sample and become a, a customer. I, I wish I could tell you that every single time you, 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 you began to en en enroll a person into the business, that individual would be a self-starter, be motivated, and get themselves to the position of ambassador in this company. I, I wish I could tell you that, that this would be easy, but I can tell you this. Les Brown says, in life, if you do what's easy, your life will be hard. And if you do what's hard, your life will be easy. I've learned one of the things that I grew up, many of you know, I was born here in the United States uh, to a mother who's from Nigeria. She's actually in Nigeria, she's been there since the whole you know, uh, pandemic uh, took place. So she went back home. She's building a school back there. But my mother is from Nigeria and my dad is from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And uh, my dad, obviously we just had Father's Day and we got a chance to hang out, my, my, my sister and uh, my sister, myself, and of course my dad. And we were talking about how he grew up and why his perspectives are what they are and why he thinks the way he thinks. And you got to think about back in the early 50s and 60s, growing up in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. For those of you, let me just give you context. Alabama was and is the deep, deep South. Um, Alabama is where Dr. King and the civil rights activists said, okay, this is where we're going to show and make our mark to show that what we've been talking about when it comes to Jim Crow and when it comes to segregation and when it comes to 
uh, being deprived, when it comes to being marginalized and oppressed, we're going to go to the heart of it, and this is what we're going to show to the world. It, it was in Alabama that Dr. King wrote the speech and wrote the letters from the Birmingham jail. It was in that deep south of Alabama where the civil rights movement was not birthed, but it was certainly was certainly propelled into momentum. We were talking about how he grew up in the deep south and how it became normalized to go through segregation, how it became normalized to experience Jim Crow water fountains where there was a white water fountain and a black water fountain. It, it was normalized for him to go to the hospital and there's a curtain that says for colors and for whites, the same doctor, same gloves, same hands, but you came in two different directions. It was normal behavior for them to order their food and have to walk around the back door to get it. It, it was normal to be in a school and he was a part of the school system when he recalled them making an announcement that the schools would become desegregated and the next year how the white kids got bust into the all black school and it was normal. I asked him, I said, were there fights? Was there rioting? What, what happened? And he says, no, kids were kids. I, I looked at my mother's experience. I'm talking about suffering tonight. If, if you were gonna put a title on tonight's training, I, I want you to put this as your title, suffering through success. Yeah. Suffering to success. Suffering to success. Because some of us, and I've had many conversations with you leaders, and when you start going through suffering, when you start getting the crown or the cross put on your back, you start complaining because you're looking at those of us that have a semblance of a crown because we have been willing to suffer for it. And you are, uh, we're doing a great job with promoting and gallivanting and showing you our crowns of success, our crowns of achievement, our crowns of victory. But you need to understand that there can be no crown without a cross. You need to understand there can be no rain without mud. As a matter of fact, I, I venture to say this to you, ladies and gentlemen. And I want you to hear me very clearly tonight. You know, many times we talk about the how-to strategies of building our business. We talk about the three-way calls. We talk about lifelines. We talk about showing the plan. Many a times you hear us talking about post to post and, and all of the different how-to that are required to be successful in our business. But ladies and gentlemen, tonight, I don't wanna focus our time and our attention on the how-to. I wanna talk about your why-to friend of mine posed a question earlier today. He's a multiple seven-figure earner annually in our, in, 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 our, in our profession. And he says, what's the one thing that you would point to that would determine a person's success or failure in our business? What, what's the one thing, and I want y'all to put it in the comments, put it in the chat, light up this chat. Tell me, what's the one thing you would attribute to when you look at a six-figure earner in, in network marketing or a seven-figure earner and it works, what's the one thing you can attribute their success to? Well, some of us, you would probably say desire. Others, you may say hunger. Some of you may say persistence. Put it in the chat. What would you say is the number one cause for a person to succeed? Somebody said consistency. I like that. Some of you said discipline. What's the number one thing? Ladies and gentlemen, I can quantify it through one word. Suffering. Suffering. My mother, born in Nigeria, came to America. We're talking about suffering to success. I'm going to give you four philosophies of a seven-figure earner, six and seven-figure earners. Title of the, tonight's training is suffering to success. Suffering to success. Suffering. Some of you are suffering with the inability. Listen, you're suffering from the inability to compartmentalize. Yeah, there, there, there has to be 
a level of understanding in our business where you learn how to compartmentalize. Jared, what do you mean? Have you ever hit the pinky toe, your pinky toe on the side of a bed or on the side of a door? Have you ever hit that pinky toe? And it, it's, it's a riveting pain that shoots up through your back. How many of us know what I'm talking about? You, you ever hit that pinky toe? And um, the first thing you do is you probably reach down and grab it. Some of us, you use some words and it's not, oh, Father God. Yes. You, you say something, you hold it, you hold the pain because you're trying to bring pressure to it. Some of us, we look at the pain. Some of us, we, we I mean, it's all types of things, but here's the deal. Here's the deal. You don't have the same response to that pain 20 minutes later. You don't have the same response to the pain two days later. You don't have the same response to the pain two weeks or two months or two years later. Jared, what are you saying? Some of you have to learn how to handle your emotional pain as you do your physical pain. You are still holding on and cussing and complaining and grabbing a hold to pain that happened two weeks ago, two months ago, two years ago. And you keep talking about who didn't join. You keep talking about who's not working. You keep talking about who's not moving. You keep talking about who's not growing. You keep talking about and holding on to things that no longer serve you. You keep necessitizing and anesthetizing in the pain because you have not matured to a place of understanding when it comes to suffering. Pain is necessary. Suffering is not optional. Write it down, please. Pain is necessary. The pain of the process is necessary. But here's the challenge that you have in the business. The challenge that you have in the business is natural human behavior says, I want you to hear me. I do things in the pursuit of pleasure and in the avoidance of pain. Are you listening to me? I do things in the pursuit of pleasure. I, you know why you eat that ice cream and that it's pleasurable. I, I do things to pursue pleasure and I try to avoid pain. And when I when you're confronted with accomplishing your dreams and your goals and your desires, we all know that the pain of a, the pain through the process is necessary. That's why so many people watch this, they quit. They don't fail, they quit. Jared, why do they quit? Because the pain is necessary and suffering is not optional. First philosophy I want to cover tonight. Remember, philosophy is way of thinking. A philosophy, and I want you to write that down, is the way that you think. People ask me all the time, Jared, can you mentor me? No, I cannot. Why? Because to mentor you means I have to take my life's philosophies and I have to be willing to pour my life's philosophy into you. It takes time, it takes commitment, it takes a closeness, it takes submission, it takes omission, it takes forgiveness, it takes bumping heads, it takes compassion, it takes deliverance, it takes everything inside of the mentor to decide to pour their life's philosophy into the mentee. Now listen to me, there's a difference between a protege and a parasite. Shucks. There's a difference between a protege and a parasite. Jared, what's the difference? A true protege wants what's in the mentor's heart. You listening to me? A protege wants what's in the mentor's heart. A parasite wants 
what's in the mentor's hand. A parasite is a leech, shucks. A parasite, huh, here it is. A parasite wants what's in the, a parasite wants so much what's in the mentor's hand that they fight for the mentor's crown, but aren't willing to suffer with carrying the cross. A, 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 men, a, a, pro, a parasite, here it is, a parasite, a parasite, they want things they have not earned. Parasite wants things that they have not earned. Jared, how do you know they haven't earned it? Because you don't yet have it. Okay. Can I bring it closer? Let me bring it closer to home. Here we go. Have you ever gone to a vending machine? How many of us, by show of hands, have gone to a vending machine? We've gone to a vending machine. By show of hands, please. Thank you, man. Thank you, sir. You, you've gone to a vending machine, and it says at the vending machine, let's say it's one of those Coca-Cola vending machines, it says a certain price must be paid for that Coke. Let's say, for example, that Coke costs $1. This vending machine costs one dollar. You go to the vending machine, and um, oh God, I hear you. You go to the vending machine, and you put in fifty cents. Hmm. You put in fifty cents to the vending machine, and the coke that you want does not come out. Parasite philosophy. You get mad <laughs> at the vending machine. Jared, what do you mean? You, you get mad at the vending machine because you feel like I paid the price for what I want. And here's what happens if you're not careful. What happens is you begin to criticize, write it down, complain, and condemn the vending machine for not giving to you what you want based on what you've put into it. You start saying, well, the other vending machine I visited, the other vending machine I went to, the other vending machine down the street, the other vending machine I was at last week, the Coke there only costs 50 cents. Why does this one cost? Come on, tell the truth, Shane the devil. How I many of you have done this or know some people that have done this? You, the, 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 the Coke there costs 50 cents. Why does it cost a dollar here? And here's what happens. You begin, like I said, to criticize, complain, condemn. And the fourth dangerous thing you begin to do, compare. Baby, did you not know that the cost of the Coke changes based on location. Are you listening? The cost of what you want changes oftentimes based on your location. So now, here is what you're faced with. You can either shake the vending machine. <laughs> you start shaking the vending machine trying to shake out a Coke that you haven't paid full price for. You can, number two, kick and complain the, at the vending machine because it's not giving you what you feel you've paid for. You can, number three, start asking, uh-oh, other people to give you the difference so that you have enough to get what you want. And if they tell you, as I've done many times before, I don't have the change, you get mad at them. Like it's their fault. You didn't have the full amount. I'm teaching better than you respond. Parasites complain about it. 
And if we're honest, some of us have some parasite moments. I've been there. Man, 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 it's a dollar I put in 75 cents. What you mean you ain't got 25 people to put below me? What, what you mean you can't put 2,500 in volume below me? What you mean you can't give me 25 loyals? What, what you mean you can't give me 25,000 people? What, what you mean I'm only 25 away? Why can't you give it to me? I, I've been there where I keep pushing the button like, what's wrong with this company? What's wrong with this volume? What's wrong with these products? What's wrong? And I'm pushing the button trying to get to my goal, but I'm saying, is something wrong with the machine? But when I grew up and I did away with childish things, I realized, and I want you to hear me, I hadn't put in enough change. Shucks. What am I saying to you? Some of us don't, oh God, don't have what we want. Not because we haven't put in anything. It's because you haven't put in everything. You haven't put in everything that's required for what you want. You haven't put in enough of everything. You haven't put in enough change. So now here we are. We're, we're, we're short. <laughs> 25 CV short. 2,500. CV short, 25,000 CV short, 250,000 short from ambassador. It's not the vending machine's fault. It's not the company's fault. It's not the product's fault. It's not the sponsor's fault. It's not the upline's fault. It ain't my fault, but it is my responsibility. First philosophy of a six and seven figure earner, write it down, you must learn how to picture your success. You must learn how to picture your success. Write that in the chat. Come on, put that up on social media. Picture your success. I must learn. It's a skill to picture your success. Why is it a skill? Because your whole life, for many of us, you have been programmed. You have been institutionalized. You have been compartmentalized not to know how to picture your success. You've been taught, you've been trained that money is the root of all evil. You've been taught that money doesn't grow on trees. You've been taught that it's easier for a rich man to go through the eye of the needle than it is for him to get through heaven. You've been taught all of these philosophies that have caused you to eliminate the mental fortitude and capacity to be able to picture your success. And when you don't know how to picture your success, you get distracted and here it is, you get discombobulated by other people's success. Y'all almost made me cuss. I don't care how much she making. I do not care how much he's making. The philosophy says, picture my success. Are you listening to me? Remember in school, remember in school, remember in school when you were doing test taking time and um, you found yourself like me, not knowing the answer to circle on the Scantron and uh, you start leaning over to your neighbor. And uh, the teacher caught you and said, keep your eyes shut on your own, uh-oh, paper. How many of us remember that? The teacher said, keep, come on, come on, talk to me. The teacher said, keep your eyes on your own what? Paper. Why did he say that? Because listen to me, listen to me. The teacher knew that you can be distracted by looking on somebody else's paper that doesn't have the same test as you. Shucks. My, my teachers got so good at, 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 at teaching us that they understood there would be people that would be in there trying to cheat. 
So they would give us, listen, they would give us the same test in a different format. They would change the questions on the test so that if you found yourself, oh God, cheating off somebody else's paper, you would still fail the exam because you were supposed to study to show thine own self approved. You were supposed to learn the host of hosts. You were supposed to learn how to show the plan. You were supposed to learn how to prospect. You were supposed to learn how to do the three-way call. You were supposed to learn how to build your business. And so what happened was this. You can do like some people did. Start to get buddy-buddy with their friends. and Start getting buddy-buddy with those that had learned and, and, and had, had done all of the, that they needed to do to get the answers. And you start trying to cheat off a test and you still come up with the wrong answer. Number one, picture your success. You've got to have pictures. Now, I know this sounds esoteric. I get it. I understand. I, I know this sounds far-fetched and far-reaching. I get it. I've been there. I used to think this stuff was corny when I talk about writing your goals down. That sounds corny to broke people. When I talk about to think is to put in an ink, that sounds cavalier to those that don't have the money that they really want. It, when we talk about putting up, uh-oh, this is, I know this is going to get me in trouble. When we talk about putting pictures up of the dream car that you want everywhere that you visit, now, on your bathroom, oh God, on your bathroom mirror, do you have a picture up of that Porsche you want? Do you have a picture up of that Bentley that you want? Do you have a picture up of that Rolls Royce or that Lamborghini? That you, It could be a picture of a minivan. I know some of you, oh, I'm not into cars. I understand. Do you have a picture up? Why, Jared? Because I must learn how to picture my success. I'm not just looking at everybody else's pictures. I'm keeping my eyes on my paper. So I got my stuff up. I, I look at it every single day. How does it work? It is, I don't know if it's osmosis. It just works. Ask any successful person that you know. Do you have written goals? Do you have pictures up? Did, did you look at it? Guys, I remember my wife. My wife. She, she, she took it extreme. And sometimes some of you, you know why we don't we don't get extreme with this? We don't get extreme with this because we are too worried about looking cool to broke people. We're so consumed with how we look, how we come across, how we appear to people that don't have the things that we want. i never forget while she was in her apartment. She had an old school television that had antennas. And you, you remember the antennas, the rabbit ear antennas? How many of y'all remember those? She, had the, she, she ain't had cable. No cable. No, no TV. <laughs> okay, ain't no, one no CNN, ain't no MS, NBC, ain't no Fox, no cable. And um, didn't, didn't have any internet service. No, no internet. Okay, ain't got no money. Ain't got no internet service. Well, how, how, how did you watch, uh, how did you get online? Well, the neighbor had Wi-Fi. And uh, the neighbor didn't have a passcode on their Wi-Fi. So I won't say that we were still in Wi-Fi. We, we were piggybacking and borrowing the Wi-Fi from the neighbor, unbeknownst to them. But, but what she did have on her door, leaving out of the apartment, was her goals. She had her goals. She had her Porsche up. She had... Pastel, she had these big old cardboards of, of, of goals all over the place. Her wedding, the ring that she wanted. She had the leader she wanted to attract into her business. She had the money she wanted to give the church and charity. She had her faith confessions all over. You know, you call them affirmations. She had her faith confessions all over the place. In her, be in her bedroom, it was all over in her one pet, uh, one one, one, uh, one bedroom apartment. It was in the living room all over the place. It was in the bathroom all over the place. It was in her Scion, her 2005 Scion on the steering wheel of the Scion. 
she had the steering wheel of her Porsche. The Scion, she had gotten into a wreck. The Scion would squeak and leak every time she pulled off the line. It was scraping, the bottom of it dragged because of where she hit and, uh, and pulled off. And, and so it would drag on the ground. And you would hear Portia coming from two miles off. That's her. When, when it was time for the business briefings, we knew Portia was coming up because we are, we could hear the car coming up. Are you willing to suffer to success? Number one, picture your success, your, your assignment, your takeaway from today. I want you to put up in front of you what you want inside of you. Are you listening to me? I want you to put up in front of you what you want inside of you. What you want, I want you to put, not what they want, not what they have. If what they have inspires you and, and stretches you, that's beautiful. But what do you want? What type of car do you want? What type of house do you want? What type of church and charity do you want to give to? You know, it, it's, it's amazing to me. And, and, you know, the political climate we're in, everybody's talking about race relations and black and white and black on black crime, black on white crime, all of that. And there's a place for it and it's all real. It's all real. One of the things that people are failing to mention is that in poor communities, the violence is higher because they have no money. You very seldomly see rich people shucks, breaking in and looting convenience stores. You very seldomly see people making 200,000, half a million dollars, a million dollars a year trying to go steal some Nike Air Jordans doing a protest. What am I saying? I'm saying I'm not condemning, I'm not criticizing, I'm not demonizing, I'm not even judging. What I'm saying is, why don't we get the money part right? Why don't we get the economic part right? Why don't we get the wealth accumulation right, and then we can pay for a seat at the table? Remember, you either have a seat at the table or you're on the menu. Number one, picture your success. Number two, decide what you're willing to give up. Suffer. In that same interview, I was watching with Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith talked about his son, Jaden, his second kid, Jaden. Talked about how Jaden, been shooting the uh, karate, karate Kid movie, and uh, Jaden was trying to do the splits, couldn't do the splits, he wasn't flexible enough, and Jaden was obviously in the movie, Will Smith, was co-directing, he and his wife, co-directing and producing. So they were on set as well. Isn't that amazing? To be able to afford the ability for your child to pursue their dream. Both parents on set. They on set, can't do the splits. The sensei comes to Jaden and pushes him down to a point where he's in tears trying to do the split. Of course, Will is looking to see how he's gonna respond. His mom is trying to dive in and save it. Mom tells uh, the director, we're done, we're done. <laughs> it's, oh, it's done, because her, her baby's crying. Her baby's in tears. Yeah. Jada asked um, Jaden, you ready to go? Tears in his eyes, he says, uh, no, one more time. Oh, Jesus. Hey, one more time. Would you write that in the comments? One more time, one more time. I think that's the sustratum of my success in life. It's, I've been willing to do it one more time. Will said at that moment, he knew the bulk of his parenting had been done because his son got it. It's in that, see, that's, 
That's what I can't give you. That's what the coach can't give you. That's what the mentor can't. I cannot give you the hunger and the fight and the ability to be willing to say, I will suffer one more time. I believe your success is on the other side of your confession of one more time. I'm a prospect one more time. I'm going to put this host of post up one more time. I'm going to make another one more. I'm going to do this company. Well, I know the last company I did, the last two companies I did, I gave my all. I know I was there for a year. I know I was there for five years. I know I was there for 10, but I'm going to do it one more. I believe it is the one more time. The one more time philosophy that allows you to cross over. Jaden says, no, mom, I don't want to quit. No, mom, I don't want to blame my, my sponsor. No, mom, I'm not going to blame the company. No, mom, uh, uh, no, no, it, it's been too much invested. I've got 75 cents invested into this. I'm a, I need, all I need is 25 cents. I, I've, I've come too far to just come this far. One more time. That ought to be your declaration for the rest of the month. One more time, one more time, one more. The auto ship, one more time. Just one more time and he goes and he does the split now. And it's one of the quintessential parts of the movie and the film that people still talk about till this day. Something that was so hard, something that was so tough, something that was so tumultuous, he, he was able to do it because he was willing to suffer just one more time. I told you number two, decide what you're willing to give up. Some of you, there has to be some sacrifice. What are you gonna give up? Now, I know that's a curse word in <laughs> this postmodern day generation. You want me to make a sacrifice? You, you want me? to put wood in before I get fired? Yeah. What am I willing to give up? I may have to give up some television time. You may have to give up some radio time, some personal development. You may have to give up some time with your family. You may have to give up some time with the spouse. It's only a short period of time. In the grand scheme of things, 18 months is only a short period of time. What are you willing to give up? What sacrifice are you willing to make? What sacrifice? See, how do you know it's a sacrifice? You know it's a sacrifice when it hurts to give it up. What is it that you've been holding on to that hurts to give it up? Hmm? What is it that I've been holding on to? And you know what it is. You know who it is. I got to give. Yeah. Some of you are gonna have to give up your ego. You know that ego that says, uh, I, I'm not gonna call them because they're too successful. I, I, I'm not gonna call them because I don't want them to know I'm doing this little thing. You know, I'm gonna try to hide out and I, I'm gonna try to hide out. I'm gonna try to hide out and skate my way into 20 grand a month. I don't see that happening for you, sweetheart. Brother, I don't see that happening. There, there is no way to hide yourself from the marketplace if you want the marketplace to pay you. Picture your success. What are you willing to give up? Number three, pick a champion. Pick a champion. Who's your champion? Who is your champion? Who are you modeling yourself after? Who is the one holding you accountable? Who is the one holding your feet to the fire? Pick your champion. Who is the one causing you to stretch? Who is the one causing you to grow? It's hard to have a champion that you're in competition with. Are you listening to me? It's hard to have a champion that you are in competition with. Who is your champion? 
Who's the one that you're looking at saying, man, I want to have, see, for me, my champion, it wasn't the money, just the money. I wanted to have the level of impact that he had. I was sitting there looking at all of the people that came across stages and conference calls. Even to this day, I can trace their success to his coaching, to his example. Write this down. The way you live your life will either be an example for people to follow or a warning for people to avoid. Who's your champion? Your champion will never be perfect. But who's your champion? Who, are the, who, who is the person? Now, you can learn from everybody. I agree. But my champion is the person that holds me accountable. Who is that person? Not see, you got to decide, do you want a coach or do you want a cheerleader? <laughs> Some of you say you want a coach, but really what you want is a cheerleader. I don't want a cheerleader. I don't want somebody just singing my praises. Oh, you're the greatest. Oh, you're awesome. Yeah, that's fine. There's no, you need both. You need cheerleaders, but you need that coach that says, come out the game, you tripping. Come here for a second. Let me talk to you. Hey, run it this way. Do it that way. Here's what you're not seeing. Write this down. You cannot see the picture when you are in the frame. You cannot see the picture when you're in the frame. Who's the coach? Who's the champion? How do I know they're a champion? A champion commands respect and demands attention. A champion commands respect and demands attention. Why? We all respect champions. We all respect champions. We all pay attention to champions. I don't care what they're a champion in. If you know who they are in that field and they're a champion, oh yeah, they, they get your respect. Because you know there was a price paid for that position. You know they suffered to success. You know it. And number four, plan your work and work your plan. Plan your work, work your plan. What is your plan? this week. I know what my plan is this week. Write this down. Two o'clock Central Standard Time, I'm doing an opportunity Zoom on this same line here. Got the UK team and people all, everybody, it's open for everybody. The UK team, we're, we're rocking and rolling 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is 8 p.m. UK time. You got folks in the UK, make sure you get on this call. You got folks anywhere in the world, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time tomorrow, boom, put them on this call. Guess what? 7 p.m. tomorrow, I'm doing an opportunity call as well. Why? I've planned my work. I've got it written. I've got it planned. I didn't need to counsel with anybody. Oh, would well, you? No, I know what my plan is. And watch this. Those that want to participate in the plan, they will. Those that do not want to participate in the plan, they won't. Beyonce never calls you and says, hey, do you think it's a good idea if I come and do a concert on this day and this time? No, Beyonce sets up the date, the venue, the time, and guess what? Then she tells you. Hey, this is where I'm going to be. If you're rocking, you're rolling, come on. If not, that's all right. To the left, to the left. Plan your work. Work your plan. Tuesday, I'm rocking and rolling. 2 p.m. So why? This is closeout week for us. It ain't It ain't the last week of the month. Last week of the month, I'm going to take care of itself if I take care of this week. Are you listening to me? Write this down. I would rather a slow quarter than a fast dime any day of the week. I would rather a slow quarter than a fast dime. I'm not in a sprint. I'm in a marathon. This is a marathon. I'm not Usain Bolt. I'm one of them Kenyans. Are you listening to me? I, I'm in this for the long run. What would you rather? To make $3 million in two years? Or do you want to make $30 million over the next 10? Which one you want? Are you listening to me? Plan your work. What work your plan? What I, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of the, of the plan your work. Work your plan. You whatever your strategy is. I'm not here 
to give you one strategy over the other. Whether you have an online strategy, an offline strategy, or a combination of both, my message to you is to plan your work and work your plan. What is my plan? If I don't have a plan, I'm leaning on somebody else to have a plan, and most of the times, they have nothing planned for me. What's my plan? Talking about suffering to success. 2,000 years ago, a young man showed up with a plan. Shows up, gets revelation on what he wants to accomplish. After he gets clear, clear defined vision, he goes out to get a team. It takes teamwork to make the dream work. There's no ministry without me, shucks. There's no ministry, and when I say men, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about male. I'm talking about men as in men and women. You need a team. When I talk with leaders and they tell me what the goal is, great. Who's the team helping you accomplish this? Who's the team? Do you have them identified? Very simple. I don't believe in, 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 in playing games with people. If, you, if I don't have the right team in place, then I know the goal can't get accomplished. Jesus did not start trying to go pursue the ministry until he first got the team in place. Are you listening to me? He didn't start going to do all these great works until he established, I've got the right team. 2,000 years ago, he goes out and does some recruiting. He sponsors 12 people, 12 meters. He went 12 wide. Sponsors 12 wide, and he begins to teach and train these people. Now, it's very important that you recognize the caliber of people he recruits. This is very important for those of you building a team. The caliber of the people. I want quality, not quantity. I, if, if I can recruit the right 12, I don't need to, I, I don't need to recruit 122. Sometimes I may need to recruit 122 to find the right 12. But I'm looking for the right 12. He finds tax accountants, physicians, fishermen. You know, they got their own fishing company. He goes and gets business-minded people. He's a rabbi, a teacher. He never goes and recruits another rabbi. Shucks. He didn't go recruit another rabbi. He went and recruited other people that were skilled in areas he wasn't skilled in. If everybody can do what you do, you've got a team full of you. You want a team of people that can duplicate what it is we're doing in their own way. Are you listening to me? He recruits the 12. And for three and a half years, he works and mentors and develops and coaches those 12s. He never writes a book. He never erects a building. But you can never forget his work. 2,000 years later. When it came down to it, for him to finish what he started, he knew he came to die. You can go read it yourself. He prays the same prayer three times. Didn't change a word in the prayer. Even Jesus almost had a choking point moment. Says the same prayer three times. He picks up his cross. Homeboy jumped up. Grab the knife, switch blade, cut the police officer ear off. <laughs> Jesus said, nah, bro, <laughs> put the ear back on. <laughs> I'm ready now. I'm ready to put in my last 25 cent for my coke. I I'm ready to put in what's, I'm ready to put in the required change. 
I'm not mad at nobody else walking around with Coke. I'm not jealous of nobody else walking around with Fanta. I'm not upset with nobody else walking around with Sprite. I'm going to get the remaining 25 cents for what I want. What about you? Are you willing today, starting today, are you willing to practice these four philosophies? Number one, to your success. Number two, you got to put those pictures up. Number two, what are you willing to give up? You know what you're going to have to give up. You know it. Some of you as things, some of you as people, some of you as pride, some of you as envy, some of you as jealousy, some of you as competition. You're going to have to give it up. The reason why you keep bumping your head in the same place is you will not release the luggage that won't allow you to soar. Some of us is unforgiveness. You're going to have to let that go. You cannot move forward until you let some things go. Number three, pick your chapter. Number four, plan your work and work your plan. Tomorrow, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, we're ready to rock and roll. Seven, uh, 2 p.m., 7 p.m. tomorrow. 2 p.m., 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'm expecting you to pack the lines. I'm expecting you to invite your guests, invite your potentials. I want you to get on your, your, your uh, cell phones tonight, get on your emails, get on your inboxes, DM them, whatever you got to do. Get them this Zoom ID number. Let's pack out the lines tomorrow. I'm telling you, it's going to be absolutely incredible. We're going to be closing out in a monumental way. Obviously, we've got the promotion going on right now. Every three loyal customers you personally enroll, you earn a hundred dollars in in a bonus, a fast start bonus, a hundred dollars for every three loyals you enroll. You ought to be digging like an Alabama tick right now. Okay, so this next week here, we're we're, we're going we're going through with a blitz like an incredible madman and mad woman this week. Why? Because we already know next week is going to close itself. If we handle this, I promise you, whatever you've done into, up until this point, when it comes to enrollments, when it comes to volume, you should be able to do next week, which is taking you all three weeks of this first month to do, or this first half of the month to do, the last week of the month. But you've got to sell out. You've got to put in the required change for what it is that you want. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being on tonight. Thank you to all the leaders. Thank you to each and every one of you for being on. This recording will be made available on our team website, uh, www.thesystemthatpays.com. Appreciate everybody's time and attention. God bless you. God bless your families. And God most certainly bless your dreams. Good night, everybody.